Okay, so now we're going to talk about part two, and that, that this is the what-if game. Okay, this is what part two is about. And this is really the part that you need to know, <clears throat> that you need to understand. What happens if the null hypothesis... Let's try it again. What happens if the alternate hypothesis is very close to the null hypothesis? Okay, so I set this up. Let me set this up like 24.86, okay? Notice how the alternate hypothesis, what we believe the all or what we believe mu is, is very close to the null hypothesis. Okay, now the question is, if the truth is really close to what we assumed was true, how likely are we to make the correct decision and reject the null hypothesis? Okay, you see how close these numbers are? You see how close these distributions are? I haven't changed the critical value because I haven't changed the null hypothesis. Notice where the critical value is now. What's the probability of a type, uh, type 2 error? Well, it's quite big, isn't it? It's actually all of this now. Here's the probability of a type 2 error. Accepting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is not true. Okay, that's not very good. Alright, you see how this probab probability is very large? That means the power is very small. So here's the power again. And here's the probability of type 2 error. Okay, very big, very small. This is not a very good test because if the truth is that the mu is very close to 25, this test doesn't have a lot of power, the, a lot, doesn't have a, a lot of the ability to correctly reject the null hypothesis. Okay? And the only way to help it, the only way to help it and make this test better is to increase sample size. Okay, now you might say, but wait, if we change alpha, that's going to help. Well, yeah, it will. It'll help the type 2 error probability, but it's going to not help the power. Look what happens. If we change the alpha, all that's going to do is slide this critical value that way. If it slides the critical value that way, the power is going to go down. Yeah, it'll go down, but the type 1 error, alpha, is going to go up. Okay, so if the truth is that the mean really is 25, now you've got a greater probability of rejecting the null hypothesis. So that doesn't work. The only way to help you out is to actually raise sample size. And watch what happens. Let me clear the lines off here. Okay, watch what happens when you raise sample size. If I take n and make it bigger, okay, these distributions are going to get taller and skinnier. See? Let's just go up to about 150. Uh, let's see, 1... How about 200? There. We'll go up to 200. Let me side this down a little bit so you can see the distributions. Now check it out. See, these got much taller and much skinnier than they were before. Okay? And so now we're better able to differentiate the null hypothesis distribution versus what we, what, what we believe the truth is over here. Okay? And now our type... Uh, uh, type 2 error probability is very small. It's just this region right here, okay? And our power, our type 2, or our, our power is um, much bigger. It's right here. See? So, by raising sample size, we've made the, val or made the statistic X bar a better estimator of the true mean, okay? And because of that, we've made our test much more powerful because it will more, uh, more readily detect that the null hypothesis is false when it really is false if the mu is 24.867. So that's the relationship. All right. So what you need to know is just the relationship between alpha and beta, the probabilities of type 1 and type 2 error. If one goes up, the other goes down, or yeah, one goes up, the other goes down, and there's a trade-off, though, because you don't really want the, prob the probabilities of these errors to go up. You'd like them both to go down. If n goes up, then alpha is going to stay the same because you choose alpha, but beta is going to go down. 
Okay, so that's the basic relationship that you want to know. And if you if you think about the pictures, see, then it's a lot easier for you. Uh, should be a lot easier for you to decide uh, what things are going to happen when n goes up, when n goes down, and so on. Okay, good. I hope that helps, guys. Uh, we'll see you on Monday.